people the big cities are dealing with these smash and grab robberies right now an increase in criminal activity because some prosecutors are too soft on crime uh, I would say we have seen, I'm not going to attribute the reasoning from here. What I will tell you is we have seen an increase in crime over the course of the pandemic. There are a range of reasons for that. Um, and what we're f our focus is on is what we can do to address it. The president has proposed additional funding in the budget to make sure local police departments and cops have the funding they need. Uh, we have also worked directly with police departments in areas where they are seeing the highest impact of the crime, the retail theft, which, theft, which we have great concern about. That's what our focus is on currently, is action and doing what we can to make sure the funding is out there to the communities that need it the most. But I guess, what good does it do if you're going to give police departments extra money if they arrest bad guys and they bring them to jail and then they're not prosecuted they're just right back out on the streets I, I think Peter what our focus is on is making sure that uh, the local uh, leaders the police officers and departments who know what they need for these communities have the assistance and the funding they need and that's what we're working around the clock on so, so the final one would be just in the last week uh, we saw a New York Post item about a pickpocket with more than 30 arrests back out on the street uh, we've seen an arsonist burn down a half a million dollar Christmas tree in New York City back out on the streets. Does the president think that that's good governing? Again, I think I've spoken to the president's concerns about retail theft. If you have specific and, and the actions we've taken for specific cases, I would point you to the local police departments or the Department of Justice. Go ahead, Kelly. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. But first, Fox News's Christmas tree that was burned down cost half a million dollars? It's a few metal rods and some garland, and they spent $500,000 on that? Don't ever tell me that the right is the party of fiscal responsibility when they dropped half a mil on the world's most rudimentary tree. And second of all, if anyone can explain to me how one man, reported as being homeless, burning down Fox's fake tree, has anything to do with the President of the United States, I'd love to hear it. I'm pretty sure Joe Biden is not the guy you go to with individual instances of crimes. I'm pretty sure the President of the United States is neither responsible for random one-off crimes being committed, nor is he responsible for dealing with it afterwards. For a network that claims to love the police, it certainly is interesting that they seem to have forgotten that they exist here. And on that note, it's the police, not the White House, who deals with crime. And so not just this random homeless person burning down Fox's precious tree, but with any instance of crime, including the smash and grab crimes that are sprouting up across the country, those issues are dealt with by local law enforcement, just like they've always been dealt with by local law enforcement. Joe Biden doesn't control local police departments, states and localities do. And granted, I'm not surprised that Peter Ducey and Fox News have decided that Joe Biden is responsible for every individual instance of crime in the United States now, but even their desperation to will it into existence doesn't make it a reality. But what's ironic, of course, is that while states and localities do control their law enforcement, that those states and localities were given additional funding thanks to the American Rescue Plan, a bill that zero, zero Republicans voted for. So I find it especially ironic that Peter Ducey is suggesting that somehow Joe Biden is personally responsible for each individual crime on a network that solely exists to promote Republicans, none of whom voted to give a single dollar of additional funding that would fund the departments that actually deal with crime. And look, that's not to say that we shouldn't take crime seriously. Seriously, we should. And the rise in retail thefts and flash mob theft are absolutely serious issues. They're issues that are concerning Americans across the country, in red states and blue states. I think that's something that we can all agree on. But let's not pretend for a second that Peter Ducey and Fox and Republicans don't know that it's not Joe Biden who's in charge of any of that. Maybe if these are coordinated or interstate crimes, they might fall into some federal law enforcement agency's jurisdiction, but not the president's. They know that, but they're trying to convince their supporters otherwise by playing stupid. And by the way, let's just humor Peter Ducey for a moment and imagine that Joe Biden did try to tell these local police departments how to conduct themselves. Dear God, could you imagine the outrage from Fox News that the big government president, this overreaching administration is trying to tell your local police officers how to do their jobs. I mean, this is all we'd hear for the rest of the month. In other words, Fox News is pissed off that Joe Biden isn't telling police departments how to do their jobs, but also Joe Biden better not dare tell police departments how to do their jobs. Did I get that right? And finally, think for a moment about when crime goes up. 
during recessions. Crime has increased during every recession since the late 1950s. And so when COVID wreaked havoc on our country, exacerbated by then President Trump's gross mismanagement of it, and we were duly thrust into yet another Republican led recession, well then it's no surprise that crime would rise. If Republicans were actually interested in less crime, then they would do anything they could to contain the virus so that we could reduce the accompanying high crime rates. And yet the right has done everything in its power to oppose those safety measures. From opposing mask mandates, to stay at home orders, to gathering restrictions, to the vaccine itself. So it's pretty audacious to complain about a spike in crime while they themselves are actually prolonging the overall economic conditions that have led to the spike in crime to begin with. And that really does explain all of this. For these right wing outlets, it's not actually about solving these things, it's about creating a narrative that pins the blame on Biden. And yet when it comes to actual solutions, like funding states and localities through the American Rescue Plan, like getting resources to local police departments, departments, like trying to end this pandemic because recessions fuel a rise in crime, well, Fox is much less interested in that. It's not about solving these problems, it's about exacerbating them so they can pin the blame on Biden. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.